Right, Sheila, 2013, going back to 2007, where I'm sat in St. Austell Car Park because I'm carrying out family tree research on Zara's side, on her paternal side, looking for the Barberies and other f associated family names down in Cornwall. So I'm going to be looking around St. Austell on this particular tape, which will be stored as a music audio pod and then transferred to CD and DVD. Uh, sometimes with photos to make a video. So here we go then, we're going back in time. Right, it's the 3rd of October and I'm sat in St. Austell Car Park. It's 8 o'clock in the morning, I've got here early so I can find somewhere to park. And I've put four hours in. And, um, Then I'm going to go and find the library, find out where the cemeteries are, get a map, have a look around the church, have a look around the town. Then there's other villages where I've located Barbary, so I might have to go after that. <coughs> Somewhere in this town, there's a very, very old friend of mine called Vernon Nelson, who I met when I was a cadet nurse in um, Devon. Uh, Bitterford near Ivy Bridge. He lived um, in the, one of the local houses with his parents who both worked at the hospital. I knew him up until 1973 and haven't seen him since I had Zara. He always fancied me badly um, but I was in love with someone else, Zara's dad. And so you know, he couldn't cope with it really when I had Zara, so I never saw him again. And anyway, he, he got happily married and um, he became um, a light technician, I think, for theatre groups. Um, he had been married when he was very young and she had an, um, an affair on her wedding day with another bloke, and so that devastated him for ages. Anyway, he lives somewhere in St. Austell, but I'm not even going to try and go and say hello or anything. I, am, I know where he, I know his address, but I'm not going to see him because it's uh, a lot of water has gone under the bridge since those days. Although I do send his mum, Queenie, who lives in Bitterford still. I always send her a Christmas card and she n nearly always sends me one back. Anyway, I've had a cup of coffee. Just having me last fag and then I'm off roaming about. The church is having some work done at the moment, so it's not really open to the public. But, um, hopefully I can go and have a look round. It has got some crumb stones, um, scattered about. No visible graves now, though. These creme stones. <coughs> so about a month's time it'd be open. There's an ancient stone in the front of the churchyard. It says this ancient cross found in 1879 on the manor of Trevebin, T-R-E-V-E-R-B-Y-N, was erected in 1891. This is St. Austell's bells ringing. I don't even know the name of the church yet. There's various pubs around. White Hart. Banks around it. Um, the Queen's Head. Oh, and the Hop and Vine as well. Another pub. Lots of estate agents here. Right, by chance I have actually found a cemetery on my way up to the library, not far from St. Austell Station. So I think I'll have a wander in here. It's opposite the Religious Society of Friends, the Quakers. So that's handy already. And there's actually some gravestones outside the Quaker place as well. That's really weird. Just inside the gate, where I've come from opposite the Quaker place. There's um, a part of a monument. Top part's been removed probably for safety reasons. 
and it's got in memory of John Lovering of this parish who died March the 17th, 1854, aged, it could be 52, and it's got a very big lettering of Lovering. That's a bit of a surprise, so I'll take that, a picture of that, because I know there were Loverings down this way. So this is a bit of a bonus, just getting straight to the graveyard, but I'm going to run out of flipping film in a minute. Lots of bare patches, obviously, um, graves removed, a lot of them around the edges, so I'm going to follow round in a clockwise direction. The first one I come to, just for reference, is James Gilbert, who departed this life the 2nd of September 1823, aged 67. Also, Mary Gilbert, that's spelled with a J as opposed to a G. She died in 1824, aged 69. That's so you've got Lovelins on your right as you come in, and this is the first stone against the wall on your left. Just done those for references. Made of a slaty type stone. Very clear. Very clear indeed, these slate ones are. It almost looks like they've been cleared from the, the ground area and stacked up, not like the ones in Hackney, but stacked up like little neat soldiers around the boundary of the graveyard. And they were probably once more scattered about, but for safety reasons, they've probably done this to them. No sign of anybody yet. Uh, any Still looking. Just for interest, another reference point. Middle wave, now on the boundary from the gate, is um, John Francis Hodge, who died 1855, aged 39, and Elizabeth Carn, born 1817, died 1902 and their daughter Elizabeth, she died um, age 77 in 1918. Very well preserved these stones are, because they're not made of sandstone. Obviously I'm going to might miss them if they're covered up in, um, what's his name? Brambles, I ain't going to be able to dig around for them. I found some more hodges, very popular. I might take a picture of this one. It's a twin one. It's old. It's R.R. Uh, R. Hodge of this parish who died January the 20th, 1831, aged 40. Also, Jane, I suppose that's his wife, who died in 1845. I can't quite read that. It could be 72. And then next to that, there's... W. Hodge, brother of R. R. Hodge, who departed this life February 23rd, 1831. He's 31, so it's quite young, but it's quite a pretty stone. So it's too early for the shops to be open, so I haven't been able to buy any tape or any film yet. I might have to nip back in a minute. They are so well preserved, it's unbelievable. They really are. They are a good example of old graves that are wearing well. And I feel so fortunate to have stumbled across this place before I go and look for the newer ones, if I bother. Another Hodge here. In memory of Biddy, the wife of Thomas, I think it's Melwish. Um, Thomas Hodge as well. He died in 18... 46, age 55. The Hodge is very popular here. Eh? Very popular. Some of these are so old. 1827. Somebody, uh, Nicholas Snell. He died in 1820. He was 38. And somebody who died age 14. I don't even know what the name of this park is yet. It's early in the morning. Funny to be greeted by a lovering though, isn't it? Really weird that, isn't it? Walk through the gate and there's a lover in there. There were loverings that were connected with the De the Devon knot. We've got a John Bullion here who was killed by an accident at the Plymouth Railway Station in 1877, aged 26. This stone was erected by his loving wife and her two sisters. I haven't found any barberies yet, but they could be in another graveyard, you see. And there's some, like, some are just covered up with um, 
brambles, I can't go looking at. Unless anything really sticks out, I can't go looking. It's that there's been a heavy dew and I'm getting soaked. It's going to be a nice day though, I think. Still looking around another corner of the graveyard now. But it can't be that popular, I haven't found any yet. Right, I've got found a Carveth. Here is interred Richard, the only son of Richard and Julia Carveth. He was drowned at Porthpin while bathing, August 26, 1865, in the 20th year of his age. Also Richard Carveth, father of the above, and only son of James Andrew Carveth of this place, who died at Plymouth, September the 9th, 1874, in his 73rd year. So that's the Carveth I've got there. And another lover in now, Richard. John and Elizabeth Lovering, son of John and Elizabeth, who died March 1836. It could be four years. And Helen Myra, daughter of the above, died March 26, age two years and two months. And Henry Brewer Lovering, I suppose that is. And there's an Edward something lovering. Uh, and then there's another one down the bottom. So that's a lovering grave. Stop here for a minute, some um, nutter outside. Right, inside there, I'm just going to have a fag a minute. Right, this is, I don't know what this place is called, but it's the St. Austell Civic Pride Initiative. Phase 2, High Cross Street and Cemetery Park to implement new no waiting at any time restrictions. The Highway Design Group Planning Transportation and Estates. I think they want to build a new footway adjacent to Cemetery Park Wall. Propose new stepped access to Cemetery Park. There's some funny characters in here. I've just met one bloke who suddenly I thought he was walking towards me and then he, he sort of veered off and started talking about it to his granddad. He was going to dig him up and take him back somewhere. He looked pretty angry. And there's another bloke who looks like that thing out of Harry Potter, a big bloke. Um, I did make conversation with him. Uh, he looked, he looked all right. The other one looked scarier. Right, I've got some more graves now. All stacked behind green railings. Nice and neat. Not hard, not easy to read though. I haven't found a barber yet. Oh, I found a, a James Andrew Carveth of this place. Surgeon, born July 2nd, 1775, died the 5th of February, 1812, and Anna, his widow. She was born in 1772 and died in 1812, and the Reverend Richard Henneham. 55 years, vicar of this parish. He died at 82. I suspect some of these people have been sleeping in this graveyard. Right, I'm absolutely soaked now. My trousers are soaked. Right, well, that's a bit of luck. Well, a bit of luck, but I'm going to run out of tape in a minute, so... Basically, I've, I'm finding my way to the library, and then I met somebody, and they told me where the newer cemetery is, so I'm going there first. So I'm just going to have to keep the tape for now, for um, graves. Remember Watering Hill Close, because I think the cemetery might be there, the new one. But I've got to go and find a chemist. One thing I've noticed early in the morning is all the alcoholics buying their 
whiskey and the vodka now in the shops at nine o'clock in the morning. Right, after a magical mystery tour to get another camera from the um, chemist, a nice kind lady gave me a lift to this massive cemetery. And apparently she, we had a little chat. She, her parents were evacuated in the war. And she's got family in Cheddar, Burnham, I think she said Bridgewater, and Weston. Jago Phillips, I think the name was. And she just dropped me off at the cemetery. So I've got a camera, but I might run out of tape. So I've definitely got to keep this for grave inscriptions now. That's really kind of that lady, though, to give me a lift here. Right, this is a massive graveyard, by the way. This is really big. I don't know what it's called yet, but this is the main one. And it's got old stones as well. It's not just new. So I reckon there will be some here, but I don't know where to begin. I need to find a toilet. Yeah, she said the love rings down here are, re are really big people. You know, they're, you know, the elite, apparently. They have something to do with the pottery or something. So she said um, the love rings down here are quite important. But this is a massive graveyard. It's going to be something you can't do in a day, so I should have to do scanning. But the bit I'm on now is taking me up the main central pathway to the church. Just as a reference point. Okay, I've got... Um, Anne Dark, wife of John Pierce, died at Pentwin, April the 25th, 1893, aged 29. That's along the main thing. And William Dark, her son, died February 26, 1908, aged 25. There's a small chapel right in the centre, like they do in most. Of course, it's big, but nothing like London. There's a Roger Hodge, died in 1892, aged 81. Also, Jamie's wife died aged 77 in 1888. Lots of Hodges. Yes, uh, I don't have a map. It's very difficult to locate the Barbary bloke. There is a great big monument here, which I'll take a picture of, of Charles Pierce, the beloved husband of Anne Pierce, who died October 7th, 1909, aged 41. Erected by his loving wife and child. Pierce, William Pierce, who died at Mount Charles, St. Austell, 1904, aged 74, and Elizabeth, who died at Bold Venture, St. Austell, 1903, aged 71. Of course, the Pierce connection is linked to Peter Barbary, who married a Jane Pierce. That is the parents, I think that's the parents of um, William Henry, uh, a Jane Pierce, and a Peter Barbary. And there's, l <coughs> there's loads of pierces. Some people have got Pierce as their middle name, like a Maria Pierce Hoskins, for example. My feet are getting wet. My trousers are getting wet. It's very, very misty and damp. And I'm probably, and it's a massive graveyard. I'm just doing one section at the moment. Yeah, here, here I've got James Crispin who died in 1919, aged 73, also Dorcas, that name sounds familiar, he died 1921, aged 72, that's a big Crispin grave, James Crispin. Right, in loving memory of Willie, beloved husband of Hilda Barbary and loving father of all his children, died the 4th of August 1959, aged 66, so that's obviously a William Barbary who married a Hilda. And that's in the newer part of the cemetery, down the bottom, off a main pathway. Also Hilda, his beloved wife, died the 21st of September 1961, aged 73. So I did find a Barbary, and it could probably be related. There's a, a cross, an upright, upright cross on a plinth of a, a younger daughter of ASM Levering, Dorothy Rosina, wife of Frederick Ward Bewes. That's um, not far from the new ones. And Burke, beloved only son of A.S. Levering, died 1914, age 18. He obviously died in the First World War. And Frederick Ward Bewes, husband of Dorothy Rosina Levering, died 14th of February, 1975. There is a Jane Varco, V-A-R-C-O-E, of Pentwan, born the 1st of November, 1802, 
Died March 23rd, 1885. Could be a neighbour or a relation. Oh, I found a great big lovering plot here. <coughs> I'm doing these loverings because they, some of the Devon ones, like I said, have been connected. We've got um, Elizabeth Annie, the wife of John E.G. Sanford, and youngest daughter of John Lovering of this parish. She died age 33 in 18... 99, and then next to there, there's um, an Arthur Barrett Lovering, 1862 to 1913, great big, and Frederick Richard Lovering, 1861 to 1945, and he just Beatrice Lovering, 1862 to 1945. More Hodges, Bessie Park Hodge, 1904 that's a great big cross which is leaning <coughs> quite heavily to one side now. And Thomas Hodge, John and Eliza Park. Right, I finished the cemetery. Watering Hill Close it is. I only found one Barbary. But it's a, it is a big cemetery without a map and squares and that's difficult to locate. Right, I've located the parish registers in the library. But because I've got soaked, I'm going to go and change. And I might try and bring my car up here. There is actually... I can't go down that way. There is a long stay car park. How would you get in there then? It's got no entrance. Well then... Yeah, it's got a bloody... Right, what I'm going to try and do now, even though I'm wet. So I've got three hours, no, two hours parking there for the time I get back and walk back out, that'll be an hour gone. Right, I'm going to stop the tape there because I'm going to be... I've finished doing St Austell Cemetery, the main one there. And I'm going to be going into the archive so I'm going to put that on a separate disc in a minute so over and out for now this is Sheila back in Cornwall in 2007